Do you want to become a top priority in someone's mind? In today's fast-paced world, amid the flurry of information and fleeting interactions, gaining priority and attention from others is no easy feat. No one enjoys feeling like they're just a backup plan for someone else. So how do you overcome this? Today, let's explore 10 subtle art principles distilled from ancient Stoicism, a mindset that has stood the test of time and remains unique to this day. Let's uncover how Stoics have applied these principles to naturally become individuals whom everyone around prioritizes and admires. It's not about fundamentally changing who you are, but rather about nurturing and enhancing your inherent qualities of greatness. So if you've ever felt overlooked or underestimated, this discussion is bound to be enlightening. Before we dive in, take a moment to like, subscribe if you haven't already, as it means a lot and provides us with significant motivation. Stay focused and don't miss a beat because by the end of this journey, you'll have gained a fresh perspective on being acknowledged, heard, and appreciated in every interaction. Now, let's begin. Number one, mastering the mystique. On the path to leaving a lasting impression, the initial move is to embrace the charm of intrigue. But by mystery, we don't mean keeping everything under wraps or concealing your true self. It's about gradually unveiling aspects of yourself, akin to a captivating tale that unfolds page by page. This tactic ignites curiosity and maintains others' interest in getting to know you better. Picture this. When you meet someone for the first time and they spill all their life details at once, there's little left to uncover later on. Yet, if they share their anecdotes, aspirations, and musings piece by piece, each encounter becomes an opportunity to discover something fresh and enthralling about them. The gradual process of discovery keeps our curiosity piqued. Ancient thinkers like Marcus Aurelius emphasized the strength in holding back. Instead of laying bare everything at once, they advocated for sharing thoughts and insights thoughtfully and when the time is right. This approach doesn't mean you're concealing your true nature. Rather, it allows people to grasp and value the complexity of your character over time. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once remarked, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This wisdom can be applied to how we reveal ourselves to others. Relish the current moments of connection without feeling pressured to spill every detail about your past, future plans, or innermost thoughts. Let these aspects unfold naturally as your relationships develop. The essence of mystery isn't about crafting a false image or purposefully keeping others in the dark. It's about recognizing the worth of your life tale and sharing it thoughtfully. Like a masterful storyteller, you aim to unveil the depths of your character, experiences, and beliefs in a manner that entices others to delve deeper, to become part of your journey. This approach to socializing exudes an irresistible charm. People naturally gravitate towards those who intrigue them, who offer just enough to spark curiosity. It's akin to the excitement of immersing oneself in a compelling book. You eagerly anticipate what the next page holds. By embracing the art of mystery, you transform into that captivating narrative, leaving others eager for each new chapter in your story. Number two, cultivate your happiness. This rule is crucial because when you're content within yourself, you naturally radiate attractiveness to others. It's not about faking happiness. It's about authentically discovering what brings you joy and going after it. Marcus Aurelius believed that happiness originates from within. He expressed, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This implies that your happiness isn't reliant on others. It begins with your own mindset and outlook on life. 
By embracing positive thinking and deriving joy from your own endeavors and accomplishments, you exude a sense of assurance and fulfillment that captivates others. Seneca stressed the significance of finding contentment within oneself. He held that genuine happiness is internally cultivated and doesn't hinge on outside influences. As he put it, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This translates to living in the here and now, relishing life's pleasures as they unfold, rather than perpetually chasing happiness from external sources. Epictetus also highlighted the significance of directing our attention to what we can control. He urged, seek not the good in external things, seek it in yourselves. This serves as a potent reminder that your happiness shouldn't rely on the actions or opinions of others. Rather, it should stem from your own values, pursuits, and self-nurturing. In everyday practice, this principle entails indulging in hobbies and interests that bring you joy, surrounding yourself with supportive individuals, and prioritizing your well-being, both mentally and physically. It's about crafting a fulfilling life that satisfies you, regardless of your relationship status. When you're content with yourself and your circumstances, you don't seek validation from others. Instead, you share your genuine happiness with them. This authenticity is incredibly appealing and attracts others to your life, not because you rely on them for happiness, but because they're drawn to your genuine joy. To sum up, making your own happiness is about nurturing a positive outlook, living in the moment, and discovering delight in your daily life. This inner joy shines outward, making you someone others enjoy being with and naturally putting you in a significant place in their lives. Number three, prove your value. It's not about bragging or pretending to be someone you're not. It's about demonstrating that you're unique and significant, just like everyone else and that having you in someone's life is special. Imagine it like this. Things that come easily are often taken for granted, but those that are rare, that take effort to attain, are cherished more. This rule is about showing that you're like that rare, precious gem. It means living your life in a way that shows you honor and value yourself. When you do this, Others will begin to recognize and honor your worth, too. Marcus Aurelius once shared, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This emphasizes focusing on what's within your grasp, your actions, beliefs, and strengths. When you recognize your own value without seeking validation from others, you naturally become more attractive. Seneca also emphasized the importance of time and its reflection on our self-worth. He stated, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. By choosing not to invest your time in those who don't appreciate you, you demonstrate the value of your time. This doesn't imply arrogance or indifference. Instead, it suggests immersing yourself deeply with those who honor and cherish your time and efforts. Additionally, Epictetus, another influential Stoic philosopher, stressed the significance of self-reliance. While we can't dictate the world around us, we can govern our responses. In the realm of relationships, this entails not craving approval or validation from others, but discovering it internally. When you are self-sufficient and assured, Others are inclined to perceive you as valuable. In action, this principle revolves around living with dignity, self-esteem, and assurance. It's about understanding your value and confidently displaying it in a modest yet steadfast manner. When you honor yourself, establish healthy limits, and pursue your aspirations with resolve, you inherently draw respect and notice from others. They perceive you not merely as another individual, but as someone significant and deserving of investment. This marks the beginning of becoming a priority in their lives. Number four, let others invest in you. 
this guideline is all about understanding your worth, akin to a precious and distinct gem, not something easily acquired without exertion. This idea echoes the wisdom of Stoic thinkers. Epictetus once remarked, no great thing is created suddenly. This holds true for relationships too. Meaningful bonds aren't forged in a flash. They demand time, dedication, and shared effort. By allowing others to invest in you, they come to appreciate your value and the positive impact you bring to their lives. Marcus Aurelius also stressed the significance of self-worth. He championed inner strength and self-esteem, suggesting that how you view yourself greatly influences how others perceive and value you. As Aurelius put it, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself. When you recognize your own value and exude this confidence, others are more inclined to acknowledge and honor your worth. Seneca's teachings also echo this principle. He advocated for a life of self-satisfaction and the importance of valuing oneself first. He remarked, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This implies that worrying about others not recognizing your value is often unwarranted. By prioritizing your own value, others will gradually come to see and appreciate it too. In action, this principle revolves around living a life that mirrors your value. Pursue activities that enrich your knowledge and skills. Attend to your well-being physically, emotionally, and mentally. Create a life you're proud of, one others would eagerly join. Remember, when people dedicate their time and energy to you, it forges a deeper bond, making your connection more profound. They begin to view you not merely as another face in their life, but as someone significant and irreplaceable. In conclusion, being valuable and open to others' investments means recognizing your worth, striving for self-improvement, and nurturing meaningful relationships through mutual effort and respect. This approach positions you as a priority in others' lives, not through demand, but through genuine recognition and appreciation. Number five, put yourself first. This means taking care of yourself and respecting your own well-being. Remember, self-care isn't selfish, it's essential. Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This quote underscores the importance of focusing on yourself and your needs. It reminds us that although we can't control how others treat us, we can control how we treat ourselves. Seneca stressed the significance of self-reliance and independence. He believed that our happiness should originate from within and that we shouldn't depend too much on others for our sense of value or happiness. According to him, finding satisfaction within ourselves is crucial for leading a well-rounded and peaceful life. Epictetus also added wisdom to this discussion. He emphasized the significance of concentrating on what we have power over, our actions and reactions. His words, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Highlight the essence of looking after your own needs. Essentially, it's about owning your happiness and well-being instead of relying on others to provide them for you. In practice, making yourself a priority means setting limits in your relationships and ensuring you're not always putting others before yourself. It's about carving out time for your own well-being, whether that's for relaxation, hobbies, or personal development. Prioritizing your needs involves making decisions that contribute to your health and happiness, even if it means occasionally turning down others. In sum, prioritizing your own needs is about recognizing and honoring your own value. It's about taking care of yourself, physically and emotionally. When you do this, you not only build a fulfilling life for yourself, but also become a more attractive and respected presence in the lives of others.
By showing that you value yourself, you inspire others to value you too. If you've made it this far and you're still with us, please take a moment to drop a comment below to share your thoughts or simply type, I prioritize myself to let us know that you resonate with the message today. Your feedback is invaluable and keeps us inspired for future videos. Now, let's continue on this journey. Number six, treasure your time. It's about recognizing that your availability and focus are valuable and should be given wisely. Show that you have your own life, passions, and duties, making your time and attention meaningful gifts you choose to offer. Marcus Aurelius stressed valuing our time, saying, don't act like you have forever. This reminds us that time is precious and we should use it wisely. Being picky about how and with whom you spend time signals that your presence isn't something to be overlooked. Seneca also stressed the importance of time. He famously said, it's not that we have little time, but that we waste a lot of it. This underlines the idea that being mindful of how we use our time matters greatly. When we're not always at everyone's beck and call, it shows that we hold our time dear, which encourages others to do the same. Epictetus advocated focusing on what we can control. He urged us to invest our time in things that add value and enhance our lives. In terms of valuing your time, this means engaging in activities that matter to you and only spending time with those who honor and appreciate it. In practical terms, respecting your time means not automatically agreeing to every request or invitation. It's about having your own agenda and priorities and consciously deciding how to spend your time. This means striking a balance between your own needs and those of others. So you're not constantly at the bottom of your own priority list. Therefore, valuing your time and presence involves acknowledging your own value and demonstrating it through how you organize your time. It's about being present where it truly matters while also ensuring you reserve enough time for yourself and your personal goals. This approach makes your presence more meaningful and desirable, ultimately making you a priority in the lives of others. Number seven, embrace your own path. This involves embracing your freedom and going after what matters most to you. Instead of relying on others for happiness and purpose, aim to create a fulfilling life for yourself. As Marcus Aurelius once wisely said, he who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. This quote perfectly captures the essence of this principle. Living harmoniously with yourself means identifying and pursuing your own dreams, interests, and goals. When you're content and fulfilled on your own path, you naturally become more appealing to others. They're drawn to your independence and sense of wholeness, which makes them want to be a part of your life. Seneca underscored the value of finding contentment within oneself. He held that our happiness shouldn't hinge solely on our interactions with others. Seneca urged, if you wish to be loved, love. This counsel suggests that rather than seeking affection and approval externally, we should first cultivate love and fulfillment within ourselves. In doing so, we naturally become individuals who don't crave attention, but effortlessly draw it in. Epictetus, on the other hand, emphasized the importance of directing our attention to what we can control, our actions, pursuits, and reactions to life's trials. He remarked, we are disturbed not by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. In the context of living authentically, this implies not allowing our happiness to overly rely on external validation or perception. Instead, we should concentrate on constructing a life that brings us genuine joy and contentment. Living your own life boils down to immersing yourself in activities that bring you joy, whether it's diving into a passion, advancing in your career, 
or spending time with supportive friends and family. It's about setting goals that resonate with you and putting in the effort to achieve them. When your life is vibrant and fulfilling, people are naturally drawn to it. They see you as someone who adds value and happiness, not as someone who constantly seeks reassurance. In essence, living your own life means being self-sufficient and finding fulfillment in your personal pursuits and accomplishments. It's about embracing who you are and appreciating what you have, which inherently makes you more attractive to others. By leading a satisfying and independent life, you organically become someone others want to prioritize and include in their own journey. Number eight, preserve emotional equilibrium. This guideline encourages a balanced emotional approach to relationships. It advises against letting emotions run the show, but instead handling them in a manner that supports self-respect and respect for others in relationships. Marcus Aurelius stressed the value of emotional control and logical reasoning. He stated, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. Regarding emotional stability, this implies not reacting hastily or emotionally to situations, but responding with thoughtfulness and composure. This method prevents becoming overly emotional or attached too soon in relationships. Seneca stressed the significance of managing our emotions. He stated, he suffers more than necessary who suffers before it is necessary. This quote underscores the notion of not allowing anxiety or premature emotional reactions to govern our behavior in relationships. It suggests allowing relationships to unfold organically without burdening them with excessive emotional pressure too soon. Epictetus also highlighted the importance of managing our responses. He said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Relating this to emotional equilibrium, it implies that while we can't dictate others' actions in a relationship, we can regulate how much we let it impact us emotionally. This doesn't mean being aloof. It means maintaining a balanced emotional perspective while assessing the level of mutual commitment and respect in the relationship. In real life, this guideline means being aware of how swiftly and intensely you invest emotionally in someone. It's about taking the time to understand the person and letting the relationship evolve naturally. This not only shields you from possible emotional turbulence, but also enhances your allure by demonstrating self-value and a regard for emotional depth in relationships. In general, Preserving emotional equilibrium entails handling your emotional investments prudently. It means refraining from hasty emotional bonds and allowing them to develop organically. This poised approach renders you a more grounded and appealing partner, heightening your likelihood of becoming a priority in someone's life. Number nine, achieve balance in communication. The next tip for becoming a priority in others' lives is about sharing the load when it comes to reaching out. It's not about always being the one to start conversations or make plans. By letting others take the lead sometimes, it shows that you value your own time and interests, while also giving them a chance to demonstrate their interest in you. Marcus Aurelius once said, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. This quote fits here because it suggests that life, including relationships, requires effort, adaptability, and not always being the one in control. In communication, this means occasionally taking a step back and allowing the other person to take charge. It's about finding a middle ground where both parties contribute equally to the relationship. Seneca's lessons echo this guideline too. He emphasized self-reliance and not solely relying on others for happiness. By not always being the first to reach out, you demonstrate that your happiness and self-esteem aren't solely tied to someone else. This approach also allows them to miss your presence and take the initiative to connect, 
revealing their appreciation for your role in their lives. Epictetus emphasized the significance of self-control and restraint in our behavior. He put it simply, we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen more than we talk. In relation to our guideline, this highlights the value of listening and allowing room in conversations, rather than constantly filling the air with our own words or actions. It's about striking a harmony between speaking up and taking the time to listen and observe. Practically, this guideline means being aware of how often you're the one making the first move. It's fine to reach out initially, but also allow the other person the opportunity to do so. It's not about playing games or keeping score. It's about fostering a healthy dynamic where both sides feel equally committed to the relationship. To sum up, finding equilibrium in initiating communication is about respecting your own time while also giving space for the other person to demonstrate their interest and commitment to you. It ensures that the relationship is mutually rewarding and that both individuals are equally invested. This harmony enhances the relationship's satisfaction and positions you as a priority in each other's lives. Number 10. Be willing to walk away. The last rule to being important in others' lives is having the bravery to leave situations or relationships that don't honor or appreciate you. It's about knowing your own value and not hesitating to step away when a relationship isn't good for you. It's a strong declaration of self-worth and a crucial move to ensure you're given the respect you deserve by others. Marcus Aurelius stressed the significance of inner strength and self-esteem. He said, you have control over your mind, not outside events. Understand this and you'll discover resilience. This quote ties in perfectly with our rule. It suggests that the courage to walk away from negativity comes from within. It's about realizing that you can't always dictate how others treat you, but you can control how you react. Seneca also emphasized the significance of self-respect and not settling for less than you deserve. He said, as is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. In terms of relationships, this means that the quality of connections matters more than just having someone around to avoid loneliness. Epictetus believed in the power of choice and personal accountability. He advised, only the educated are free. This freedom includes the ability to choose to walk away from situations that don't honor or benefit you. Being educated in this context means recognizing your own worth and understanding that you deserve relationships that are respectful and positive. In practical terms, being ready to step away means establishing clear boundaries in your relationships and sticking to them. It means recognizing when a relationship isn't mutually respectful and having the self-assurance to walk away rather than settling for less than you deserve. It's a tough choice but it's a strong affirmation of your own value. In essence, being prepared to walk away is about recognizing and affirming your own worth. It's about not hesitating to leave situations that don't treat you with the respect and consideration you deserve. This guideline is crucial because it shows both yourself and others that you demand to be valued and prioritized. It's a declaration that you deserve better and won't accept anything less. As we approach the conclusion of our session today, I encourage you to grasp a vital understanding. Your true worth is not determined by what others think of you, but by how steadfastly you adhere to your principles and how much respect you show yourself. You represent a complex mosaic of your past experiences, future ambitions, and the knowledge you have gained along the way. It's crucial that you never overlook this reality. These 10 principles we discussed today should not be seen simply advice to be followed, but as strong affirmations of the remarkable individual you already are. 
Each step you take towards valuing yourself sends a powerful message to others about the value you deserve. As we conclude today's engagement, bear in mind that although this particular chapter is coming to an end, the broader journey you are on, a journey of personal growth and discovery, continues indefinitely. This path doesn't have a final destination. Each day offers new opportunities to learn, evolve, and become even more aligned with the person you aspire to be. If today's discussion resonated with you, kindly share your thoughts by commenting 100% below to indicate your involvement. Remember, recognizing these pointers is just the beginning. The real transformation begins when you integrate what you've learned into your everyday life. And finally, I encourage you to delve deeper. Displayed on your screen is a playlist that will further aid you on your journey to self-empowerment and continuous personal development. Go ahead and click on it, immerse yourself, and keep sculpting your life into the masterpiece it is destined to be. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. Continue to excel, evolve, and remember in your life's narrative, you are and will always be the protagonist. See you in the next video.